my previous excursion with a Voigtlander Besa 1, I will link the video below and on the end screen, I discussed the history uh, of the camera a bit, or, well, the history that it had with me, uh, and tested it with some Ilford XP1 C41 black and white film that expired in 1994. Now, bar the dismal performance of the film, I actually quite liked the images I was able to produce. So uh, fast forward about 18 months, I decided to load the camera with color film, which is ironic since the camera was built long before color film was even available or possibly invented. I took the camera out with me on a quick excursion, uh, like a photo trip I did out in Kalk Bay in Cape Town. a special challenge. I'm going to shoot it with some Kodak Gold 200 and because uh, last time I shot it with expired film that was really old and today I'm going to try it with some brand new Kodak Gold and see what we get. number in the red little screen at the back Kodak little arrow Kodak and two it seems like plug like I uh, screen paths the first frame just a quick recap on this uh, Voigtlander Besa it has three aperture settings so you've got f7.7 f11 and f22 and <laughs> it denotes it as landscapes, groups, and portraits. Uh, and then your shutter speeds uh, is bulb, actually, uh, 25th of a second, 50th of a second, and 100th of a second. I'm shooting a 200 ASA form, so I don't have a massive amount of leeway to play with, but I think uh, using the Sunny 16, I'm probably gonna be working at 100. F22 should give me a fairly good um, average uh, exposure shooting it in, in conditions like this. Okay, so the plan is to shoot a vertical uh, and possibly a landscape image of the lighthouse behind me. We've got some nice uh, people moving around there, fishermen. I don't mind all that. I just want sort of a general um, feel for, for the scene. This camera obviously is pretty much, it's fixed focus and you just kind of have to make sure that you keep uh, away from the minimum distance of focus, which is five meters and uh, that your aperture will give you sufficient depth of field, you know, to get all the information that you want. You're basically shooting blind when you're using this camera. You've got a little weird little viewfinder that can, you can use for portrait mode or landscape mode, and it gives you an approximation of what could possibly somehow be in the shot. Uh, it's very difficult to see through it. It doesn't show you much. You're basically guessing. Uh, and you basically have to trust your own sense of space and depth and geometry. Let's see if I can shoot this lighthouse a little bit better. Uh, you've got nine frames on here, so I'm probably not going to go around too much. This is really just an experiment with this old camera. So I'm probably going to waste all of it on this harbour wall. Um, but uh, let's see what happens. Not exactly off to an auspicious start, um, but I noticed that I had a similar sort of marking on the first roll of film, although it's not in the same place. I think that was just accidental fogging or something. Well, yeah, the horizon, hey, how's that for framing? <laughs> the vertical went slightly better, but I obviously couldn't center anything to save my life. Uh, this is a better shot. Um, obviously a little bit of haze got shooting into the light a little bit too much but let's see if I change my 
direction and I start looking the other way. Oh golly gosh, okay. At least the horizon's straight. One thing I've decided is not to try and get clever with this camera and shoot into the light. I'm just going to shoot along with the light and see if I can get a good exposure. I think uh, I should be grateful if I get something that's more or less in frame. Um, but yeah, let's 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 see. Let's let's try. I don't know. This is uh, this is basically lamography, 1929 style. And this is the best shot uh, by quite some margin. Also here you can see the camera can actually take nice images as long as you shoot with the light, I would imagine. And even uh, and towards infinity, things definitely are on the sharper side. And then I think it's fair to say something about Kodak Gold 200. Um, definitely a warmer film. Uh, it has that great filmic sort of filtery kind of look, which everybody's after. Uh, on digital cameras um, and yeah so I, I really enjoy this film the latitude is is quite forgiving and especially when you're shooting with a camera that probably has inaccurate uh, mechanics Despite the camera and its very obvious shortcomings, um, and despite the fact that I photographed a lighthouse again, like I did in the last shoot, um, this was not the camera's fault. This is me not paying attention to what I was doing. A camera like this takes consideration. You need to plan your shots and just trying to do sort of candid stuff with this camera is not really gonna work out that well, as is obvious by the dismal performance of my photographic prowess in this particular case. It doesn't detract from the fact that this is a fun camera to shoot. Obviously the lens is not sharp. Um, it does have a little bit of leakage, but I'm actually surprised that it's, uh, that it's so light tight still. And I don't think the shutter speed is maybe um, correct anymore, accurate anymore, uh, or possibly the apertures even. But for a camera that is this year going to be 95 years old I mean, still you know it's impressive to see what these things can do i will definitely try again and do a much better job i'll make sure of that please share your experience your advice your tips your tricks your questions if i can't answer the questions i'm pretty sure somebody else will be able to i'll also put some links down below for some um, cool things that i use maybe even a voigtlander they are affiliate links so i get a bit of if you buy something. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.